So before we get cracking with the next video, just a quick reminder to let you know that courtesy of our sponsor Aftershocks, you can win this pair of Aftershocks Aeropex bone conduction headphones, top of the range with £150 by entering our free competition. All you have to do is click on the link that should be appearing now. Hi, it's Craig from Scratch Golf Life and today's video we are going to be doing a test and we are going to be doing a big test, okay? A while ago I put a video up uh, explaining that I've always used the Pro V1 golf ball. I went to American Golf to buy some and they had some Honma golf balls on offer. I haven't come across these golf balls before. I was reassured that they were a good premium golf ball but they were half the price of the Pro V1 so I got some and I was extremely surprised how well they performed and when we did the test against the Pro V1 in that video it actually stacked up incredibly well. That video has been my most watched video on the channel so I thought today we would take this one step further. So just forgive me while I pick these up. Okay, so today we are going to be testing the Bridgestone. Get the right way around. Bridgestone BXS. The Homma TWX. The Shrixon Z-Star. The TaylorMade TP5, the Callaway Chrome Soft, and of course the good old Titleist Pro V1. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a high spin test with some lob wedges and some nine irons, and we're going to add those two spin scores together off the launch monitor, uh, and then we'll score them. Whichever is best, we'll get six points down to one point for the lowest. We're then going to do a driver low spin test, hit some drivers and see which one spins the lowest because a lower spinning golf ball with your driver is obviously of a benefit. Uh, and then we're going to do a distance test with a three hybrid and the driver. Again, we'll add those two distances together and see how they all stack up. Again, giving six points to the best and one point to the bottom. If some of the results are extremely close together then we will share the points out evenly we will also do a value for money test as well because what they cost is obviously also very important six points for the cheapest down to one point for the most expensive because over a year we need to buy a lot of golf balls so there could be a significant saving uh, with the cheaper golf balls in the test okay so we've got a lot of shots to hit we are not going to show all of that, obviously. We're going to start hitting the lob wedges and then we will jump straight to the results and we'll see how these six golf balls have all stacked up against each other. Okay, let's get cracking. Okay, so the results are in. The first thing I need to tell you is it has taken me two weeks to do this test. I did not want to rush it. I wanted to make sure that we did it right. So what I'm going to do here is that th there's too much information to put up on the screen from the launch monitor. And, you know, if we went through it all, then it would just be here forever. So, it, I, I, you know, I was going to do it that way at first, but I quickly realised that actually we were just going to get bogged down in so many numbers. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just flash up some screenshots from the test that I did with the 9-iron, which was just one of the tests we did with the, with the six golf balls. So as you can see, I made sure that the ball flights were all incredibly tight and the dispersion was incredibly tight. And also, when we put the data up, you can see from the second from right column, you can see the club head speed, which we kept absolutely the same all the way through. So this was to make sure, we did this with every club, this was to try and make sure that it was as fair a test as possible uh, and we get the most accurate results. So let's start off with the high spin test, okay? So what we did was 
we hit all the lob wedges with the six balls and then I hit all the nine irons also with the six golf balls. And what I did was I hit eight shots with each ball and then we took, we deleted the two lowest spin numbers and the two highest spin numbers, which then left us with an absolute average in between. So, first up, the Callaway Chrome Soft. The Callaway Chrome Soft was a very low spinning golf ball. Uh, and almost, you could almost feel it with the cover of the ball as well. It just didn't, it, it, it's hard to explain, but it just felt it like it was a little bit more resistant. It felt like it would probably last maybe a little bit longer, but it kind of just felt like it was shinier. It was, you know, it just felt like it wasn't going to grip and it wasn't going to spin as much as the other covers on the other balls. So the Callaway Chrome Soft came in last place in the high spin test. It spun at 8,000, an average of 8,738 with the lob wedge and 6,452 with the 9-iron. Next up was the Strixon Z-Star. Very similar cover, again, very shiny and kind of, you know, just didn't give me the feeling that, you know, it was really going to grip, uh, you know, and you were really going to get those grooves on it and get that spin going with it. Uh, slightly better, it was a higher spin rate on the lob wedge and actually a lower spin rate with the 9-iron, but overall it was a little bit higher. Both of those spin rates are a bit lower than what I would ideally want with those golf clubs. Next up is the Bridgestone BXS, the ball of Mr. Eldrick Tiger Woods. So, actually, 9,000 RPMs with the lob wedge is good, you know, as an average. Uh, and 6,621 is also pretty good as well. So that ball performed, as you know, I'd be happy with those numbers, to be fair. I'd probably want them to be a little bit better, but I wouldn't be disappointed with those numbers. And you can see that it's significantly higher than the previous two golf balls. Next up is the Homma TWX. So this was another big jump up, you know, at an average of 9,657 with the lob wedge and 6,649 with the 9-iron. So the Homma again has performed incredibly well. I'm super impressed with that golf ball. Next up is the Titleist Pro V1, which was, uh, again, just only slightly better than the Homma. But again, some really good numbers. But without doubt, the overriding winner of the high spin test is the TaylorMade TP5. Absolutely phenomenal numbers on the high spin test. 9848 uh, with the lob wedge and 7043 with the 9-iron. You've got to remember, I've got my Ping i500 9-iron, which has got a hot face. You know, they tend to be quite low spin in golf clubs. So... Super impressed with the TaylorMade. I mean, it was, you know, some of the, the high numbers that we deleted off to get that average were like in the high 10,000s. I mean, some really high spin numbers. So if I was playing on a Lynx golf course or a firm golf course in the summer, I would definitely be thinking of using either the TaylorMade, the Titleist or the Homma uh, for playing those types of golf courses on very firm ground because you're going to need that bit of spin to keep it on the green. Okay, so as you can see there, we've given six to the six points to the TaylorMade and one point to the Callaway. Okay, the next test was with the driver to see what the low spin numbers would be. Again, I kept the clubhead speed as accurate and as all the same through all of the golf balls. Now there is a bit of a disclaimer here because depending on where you strike it with the driver can affect the spin of the golf ball but I tried to keep it on the ball flights on the traces as absolutely as uniform as I possibly could and true to form the tailor made that was the high spin ball with the wedges and the 9-iron was also the highest spinning with a driver now I have to say first of all 2500 spin with your driver is not a bad number it's a good number but it was the lowest number in the test Homma next, 2,285. Then the Titleist Pro V1 at 2,245. And then the Strixon Z Star at 2,243. They were all so close together that we've given them all three points each. Because, you know, to have such a low amount of spin between them would have been unfair to give one, you know, uh, such a lower points tally. 
Then the Bridgestone came next with 2,205. And then the Callaway Chrome Soft was the number one with the driver at 2,120 as an average spin rate. So, you know, where you were losing out with the Callaway on the high spin test with your wedges, you're then getting that back with the Callaway with your driver. So it's interesting about trying to get that balance right with what you're looking for. Uh, so the Callaway Chrome Soft got six points, Bridgestone got five points, and then an equal three for Strix on Titleist and Homma. And the tailor made was the lowest one, uh, the highest spinning, sorry, in this case, uh, and gets the lowest points tally. Okay, so now on to distance. So we did this with my three hybrid and with my driver. So it's going to be interesting to see how those low spin numbers actually translated into distance. Bottom, TaylorMade TP5. So, yes, brilliant for stopping on the greens, but you are losing a little bit of yardage with your longer clubs. Next was the Bridgestone BXS. You know, has to be said, and then we've also got the Homer TWX. So as you can see here, I've given them all three points because there's hardly anything between them. Uh, they're all very, very similar numbers. You know, uh, anything over 280 yards is a good drive for me. Uh, so anything, you know, even the TaylorMade TP5, which was the lowest tally at four, a total of 475, uh, 276 with the driver is still a good number for me. I'm happy with that, you know, so it would have been very unfair to give it just one point. Next was the Titleist Pro V1. Uh, sorry, we've also given that three points as well because that also had, you know, we've only got four yards total between all of these golf balls, so they've all got three points. Next was the Strixon Z Star. So this one, there was uh, a little bit jump here, but again, we've given it three points because, again, at 480 as a cumulative yardage there's only five yards between all of these golf balls so i thought it again it was only fair to give them three points each uh all of these golf balls performed really well if i'm being absolutely honest i i as far as distance is concerned i could use any of those and i'm not going to notice any difference but that low spin number on the driver did actually translate into a little bit of extra yardage with the uh, Callaway Chrome Soft, where my hybrid went, you know, 205, that's a good number for my three hybrid, and I was at 282 with the driver. So I do think that the Callaway Chrome Soft deserved getting the top marks because it was getting that extra little bit of distance, uh, and that is because it's getting that lower spin number with the driver in particular. Okay, so the last test is value for money, okay? So all of these uh, prices were taken off the Clubhouse Golf website, which is, you know, probably the biggest online retailer of golf equipment now. Uh, and it was as of yesterday, which was in January 2021. Okay, so in last place with just one point is the Titleist Pro V1. It is the biggest selling golf ball in the world. So many people use it but you do have to pay a premium for it. And it's 41 pounds, well, 42 pounds for your dozen of golf balls. Next, with two points, is the TaylorMade TP5. Again, 40 pounds for a dozen golf balls, you know, that's gonna add up to a lot of money over a year. Callaway Chrome Soft is next at 38 pounds. Then we're at the Bridgestone BXS, which is at 35 pounds which was also the same price as the Strix on Z-Star. So they get four and a half points each. Again, 35 pounds, you know, that's a good price for a dozen premium golf balls, but absolutely head and shoulders ahead in value for money is the Hummer TWX at 25 pounds for a dozen golf balls. And if you shopped around, there are the odd deal where you can get two dozen for 40 pounds. So, I don't think you can ignore that massive better price on the Homma TWX because that is essentially going to save you a hell of a lot of money over a full season of golf. Okay, so let's get to the 
overall results. Okay, so this is now going to put all of those points together and we'll find out what the final order is. In sixth place is the Titleist Pro V1. Yeah, I know. Now, it's a little bit misleading because in that last column there, it only got one point for value. It performed really well in all of the other tests. So it's actually the fact that it's the most expensive ball which has dropped it down to the bottom of the list. Okay. Next is the TaylorMade TP5. It performed phenomenally well with the wedges and the nine iron. I mean, you know, just was head and shoulders the best spinning golf ball for the shots into the greens. But, you know, that was also at a little bit of its detriment with the other tests that we did. And it is the second most expensive golf ball to buy as well. So, again, the driver low spin uh, only gave it a point. But, you know, I have to point out that that low spin number of 2,500 RPM was still a good number for a driver. You know, that's not a bad number. So just, you know, bear that in mind, even though it has put that ball down at the lower end of this overall result, you know, it's still a good number for a driver with that golf ball. But it was, you know, the worst one within this test. Next is the Strix on Z Star. So this one actually proved to be a really good all rounder. Uh, it didn't, it was the second worst golf ball in the high spin test but then it performed really well sort of in the middle range on the driver low spin and the distance and it's pretty good value for money as well so you know the Strix on Z Star actually is doing almost everything well just apart from those spin numbers into the greens next is the Bridgestone BXS so this could definitely be considered as an absolute all-rounder without a doubt and it's definitely something that I'm going to consider using based off what I've seen in this test. It performed well in the high spin, it was the third best. It performed, performed really well in the low spin number with the driver and in the distance it was good as well, it was as good as all the other golf balls, it was only the Callaway that outdid it. Uh, and also it was our second best value for money golf ball to buy as well. So. Without doubt, the Bridgestone BXS, I would say, should definitely be on your consideration list for using a premium golf ball. It performed extremely well across all of the tests that we did. In second place is the Callaway Chrome Soft. Okay, so it was the worst ball in the high spin. So for me, you know, I tend to play quite a bit of Lynx golf and my home golf course, which isn't a Lynx course as it happens, but does tend to get quite firm in the summer. So that would put me off using this golf ball, but you can't deny that it performed extremely well with the driver and in the distance. And, you know, it's not the most expensive ball to buy either. So, you know, the Callaway did actually perform pretty well, but I think, you know, that the Bridgestone performed better more evenly across all the tests than the Callaway did because the Callaway was worst in one and then best in the other whereas the Bridgestone was more right in the middle across the board. And that leaves in first place the Homer TWX, the ball that surprised me massively when I got it from American Golf when I went to buy my Pro V1s. This ball just continues to surprise me. Now, you have to say the reason it is at the top of the list is because of the six points it got for the best value, okay? But I don't think you can ignore that. It's a massive saving. It's £25 for a dozen premium golf balls. That is a big, big, big saving. And if you look, in the high spin test, it performed equal second. In the low spin and in the distance, it was right in the middle as good as everything else and then obviously with the value it was by far the best so i think the homer twx is actually a worthy winner of this test just based on its performance for its cost and its value okay the truth is 
any one of these golf balls is going to perform really well for you okay whichever one you prefer because some people are very brand loyal and they like to use a certain brand of golf ball and they don't want to change i understand that the tailor-made for sure if you were playing on a very firm golf course that high spin number is going to be really really useful and what you lose even though it came down in the distance test you know we're only talking about eight nine you know, seven, eight yards here, distance, lack of distance, that's not going to make any difference, really, to you on the golf course. It's not going to be the difference between getting up on a par five and not getting up on a par five, okay? So, you know, if you're playing on a firm golf course, certainly on like a Lynx golf course, I really think that that tailor-made uh, TP5 is an amazing golf ball for those kind of golf courses. Uh, the Titleist Pro V1, it, it's the Titleist Pro V1. It's, it's a fantastic ball and it's performed really well. It's only got marked down at the bottom because it's the most expensive to buy. If you can afford to buy Titleist Pro V1s all year, crack on and keep using the Titleist Pro V1. It's a fantastic golf ball. Uh, I think the other one that's worthy of a mention is the Bridgestone BXS. That performed well in every single category and it's not the, not the most expensive to buy. So the Bridgestone really came out of this with some real kudos. But... You know, back to the winner, the Homma TWX. Okay, as I said before, it is at the top because it is the cheapest, but you can't ignore that. You can't ignore it. It performs well in the spin. It performed well in the driver and in the distance, and it's significantly cheaper to buy. So the winner of the Scratch Golf Life Premium Ultimate Ball Test is the Homma TWX. Thank you.